What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to talk about a whole full ass collection that you may have seen floating around the internet because I'm a little bit late reviewing this one, but I hope you guys are still interested. Today I am reviewing the Wet n Wild Rebel Rose collection. This is a limited edition collection that Wet n Wild released. It includes skincare, it includes makeup, it includes a whole lot of fun and we are going to review it all today. Just to sum up what comes in this collection, there is a multi-use oil, a rose toner, a rose serum, a lip scrub, and a jelly lip balm. Those are all kind of like in the skincare realm of it. And then there's a whole other section of makeup. It is a cream blush. It's a color changing black blush. There are three eyeshadow quads. There are four liquid lipsticks, two are high shine, two are matte, and there are two brushes. So today I am going to create this look here on my face with the products that are in the box. I prepped my skin with all of the skincare items. I used literally everything in this collection today because I wanted to make sure that you guys got to see all of it. And I don't want to spoil the video for you, but let me just tell you that some of these items really, really shocked me. Like really, really shocked. Like so, like, um, I'm still not over it. And because I obviously can't wear all four lipsticks with this look, I did swatches of that section so you guys get to see what each of those lipsticks looks like on the lips. Before we jump into it, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a second because it helps me out tremendously. I know you haven't watched the video yet, but if I ask you later, you may just forget or you may not be here anymore or you like went to go get a snack and you never came back. So I'm going to ask you now. And if you have found yourself, you know, lurking around for a couple of videos and you're thinking to yourself, ooh, maybe I should subscribe to this girl. I'm not sure though. Let me take this moment to say, go ahead and subscribe. First of all, it's free. Second of all, I don't know, we have fun and you're gonna have a good time. It'll be good. It's fun. just click it. I will also put timestamps down below if there was anything specific that you wanted to see the review for. And also I'll put links to where you can find all of this stuff, the availability, the prices, et cetera, et cetera. That will all be listed in the description. Okay, that's really all I have to say. I'm sorry, I, I'm zipping the lip. We're gonna go back in time to a point where I had no makeup on my face at all. And we are going to first start with the skincare portion of this collection. Okay, mm, we are starting, okay. All right, we are starting today completely barefaced because this collection is part skincare and part makeup. I also have a double espresso in spite of the fact that I already had two huge cups of coffee today. Why, Nicole, would you do that to yourself? You ask too many questions. First up, I'm gonna try the rose toner. This packaging is so, so cute, especially for a drugstore. I have to say that the packaging on this feels really nice quality. All of these bottles are glass, which usually you don't get from a drugstore skincare product. Generally speaking, I prefer hard plastic to glass because I like to be able to just throw my skincare into like a travel bag and not worry about it, but these do feel like really nice quality. And they're very cute. The little rosies are very cute. So basically this is a rose water toner from what it looks like. So I'm just gonna spray this on my face first before I put anything else on. The rose smell on that is very, very strong, but it is dissipating really quickly. So I don't think it'll hang around, which is good. I like rose water for my face. So that's something that I'll probably grab from time to time. But so far it feels nice. My skin feels plumped. Next we have the Rose Multi-Use Oil. You could use this on your skin, your hair, or your nails. I'm actually gonna try it a little bit on all three. I don't generally put oil on my skin before I put makeup on because my skin is a little bit oily through the center. I have combination skin, so I don't love oiling up my skin extra before makeup, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this and press it around the sides of my nose and on the tip of my nose because I do have some dryness there right now. Isn't it funny how your most oily spots can be your dry spots at the same time? It's like, what are you, make up your mind skin. What this actually reminds me of is the Corez. Is that how you say it? I think that's how you say it. The rose oil from Corez. My nails are a little bit jacked up right now so they could probably use all the help they can get. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub some of that oil, very little. I just took a couple of drops on my fingers and I'm just rubbing that into my, Cuticles and my hair. I'm gonna use it in my hair too. I'm gonna to stand up so you guys can see the ends of my hair. My hair looked so cute this morning, and then I went to the gym and it was pouring rain out, and it's just, it's just bleh. Seems 
like it added a little bit of shine to my hair, but it's also making my hair a lot more separated, which sometimes is a nice thing when I need a little bit more texture in my hair. But I do have very heavy hair, so sometimes when a hair oil is a little bit on the heavier side like that, it weighs it down. So far, I actually really like it on my cuticles. They look nice and hydrated and smooth for sure. And it seems to have absorbed rather quickly into the area around my nose. So, so far, not bad. I like that. Again, it does have a good deal of rose smell to it though. So if you're very sensitive to those things near your face, it might be a little bit much for you, but personally, I like it. Okay, next we have the Rose Primer Serum. It says this is a water-based face serum that moisturizes and preps skin for long lasting makeup. So I'm gonna treat this like my hydrating primer today and then I'm gonna go through the middle of my face with a pore blurring primer because that is generally how I prep my face for makeup. So I wouldn't really do it any differently with this, but mm, that feels pretty nice so far, actually. It's giving me that little bit of like a tacky primer feeling on the skin, but not too sticky and definitely not heavy. For $7.99 each, I'm really, really impressed so far with the quality of these. Next, we have the lip scrub. That's what it looks like when you scoop a little bit out. I'm just gonna take some on the back of my nail and get to scrubbing. This feels pretty good. There is kind of absolutely no scent to this whatsoever, which is a little weird because everything else is so rosy, but it's got a good amount of scrubbiness. It feels a little bit thicker than the usual lip scrubs that I use. Like it kind of feels almost waxy on the lips. I'm gonna wipe that away with a makeup wipe. It's usually how I do it before I do my makeup. It's really scrubby. Okay, you know what? These lips are feeling very soft right now. Like, really soft. Wow, okay, that's pretty good. The last thing from the skincare portion is this balm. This is a clear black balm, it's what they call it. It's like clear gray almost, and it turns pink on your lips. Now, the first thing I didn't like about this balm was I feel like the packaging doesn't really function right. Like I turn it a million times, it only comes up a tiny bit. But like I said, I used this when I first got this package and I'll show you right now. It turns very pink very quickly, which is cool, but it's not a shade of pink that I find very flattering on me. But using it after that lip scrub, it does feel really nice on my lips. So I don't hate it. I just don't really love this one, mostly because I don't really want my lips to turn this color. So not in love with that one, but I definitely like it better using it after the lip scrub than I did the first time I used it. I went ahead and did my skin and my brows since there are no other skin and brow products in this collection. I used my It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Light, and I used this Cover Effects palette to contour. This is the Perfector Face Palette. I got this in my BoxyCharm, and I used the contour shade, which is called Silhouette, and so far, I really, really like it. I also primed my eyes with the Urban Decay Primer Potion and did my brows with the Kat Von D Super Brow in the color Walnut. So next, I'm gonna jump into the eyeshadows because that's what the next step in my normal makeup routine would be. There are three eyeshadow quads. This is Secret Garden Rendezvous. And there are some quick finger swatches of those colors just to give you a little preview of what they look like. This one is House of Thorns. And there are some quick finger swatches of that. And this one is Bed of Roses. And that's what those colors look like on the fingers. Those actually swatch a lot better than I was expecting them to, but I already have one little complaint about the palettes. The palettes are really hard to get open, even after the initial time that you open them. The little sticker seems to get stuck on the mechanism in the front, and you have to like really pry it open to get it out of there. Um, I've been using my little House of Lashes scissors to like pop in there and pop it open so I don't break a nail doing it because they're really difficult to get open. And just overall, uh, for $4.99, this is what I would expect, but the packaging does not feel substantial. It's very, very light plastic, kind of the opposite of what's going on with the packaging for the skincare. The packaging is definitely where you see the difference from high end, but so far they seem like they're gonna perform really well. We will reserve judgment until they're actually getting on our eyes because swatches don't really mean a whole hell of a lot. Just That's just my opinion. So I'm gonna do an eye look dipping into all the different palettes to kind of get a little taste for each of them. And to start, I'm 
I'm gonna use the little rose brush that comes in the collection. I feel like this taupe shade here is gonna be the closest thing to a transition in these palettes. Even though it has a little bit of shimmer in it, it kind of reads as a matte. And I'm gonna start by trying that little rose brush, even though the shape of this concerns me, if I'm being honest, because the little, the petals are already in my way. Yeah, this brush is cute, but it's really not practical. So I'm gonna just put this down. Switching to a BH number seven brush, which is a similar shape, just packing that color through my crease. I'm gonna zoom you guys in, you're too far away for eyeshadow. So far that's got really good pigmentation. I kind of screwed up over here and made it a little bit too high up because of the shape of that brush, but that's okay because I'm gonna blend it anyway. I pick up a clean blending brush, go over the edge of that. The shimmer is definitely showing up a bit more than I would prefer it did in the crease area, but that's my fault because I assumed that it was gonna read more matte and I didn't really blend it out and swatch it that way first, but it actually doesn't look bad, believe it or not. I'm gonna go into this more rosy toned shade down here on a pencil brush. And I'm gonna pack that in the outer corner of the lid and a little bit through the crease. I have to say so far that the pigmentation on these is really nice and they blend very nicely. I'm not so sure if these colors are gonna go well together, but I wanna dip into one of the other quads and use that green. Again, I'm trying to pry this freaking thing open though. Gee, come on. I'm gonna go into this green shade here. I'm picking that up on a small Real Techniques brush. I'm gonna try it first without any setting spray on it, and if we need setting spray, I will go back in and do it that way. It needs setting spray. First swipe, I know it needs setting spray. Much better. Wow, that's really, really rich, deep green. Wow, look at that. I am blown away by that green. I'm gonna blend that green with a clean brush. Let's see how that goes. This is not the most well thought out look of my life, but so far the shadows are performing really nicely and that's kind of what we're here to see today, I suppose. I'm gonna go into this darker red shade on a pencil brush and use that to deepen up the outer corner. I may add some black on that outer corner as well because the first two shades that I used are really pretty but they're completely overpowered by that green because the green is so intense. On a BH number seven, I'm gonna go into that black. I think this look could definitely benefit from some brightness, so I'm gonna go into this champagne shade here from the Secret Garden Rendezvous Quad. I'm gonna pick some of it up on my pinky and just dab it over the center of that green. So it's gonna dab it on and then I'll blend it out with a brush. I'll blend out the edge of that with the same brush I used to put down the green so it kind of like automatically blends them together. All right, I went ahead and finished the other side and concealed underneath my eyes so that we could move on. I definitely could have planned this look better. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna dip back into here with a little bit more of that black while we were talking about it. But I'm so shocked at how good these shadows are, shocked. Since we're apparently going straight up smoked out today, I'm gonna go into the Secret Garden Rendezvous Quad again. And I'm gonna go into this navy blue shade on a pencil brush. And I'm gonna run that under the lower lash line and blend the edges of that with a clean brush. And I'm pulling it up around the outer corner so I could blend it into the top. And finally, I'm going into the Bed of Roses quad and I'm gonna pick up this mauve tone shimmer right here on a pencil brush. I'm gonna wet that with Fix Plus. And I'm gonna pop that on the inner corner, concentrating that on the lower part of the lash line. I'm gonna go finish up the eyes with some lashes and stuff, and then we'll move on to the other parts of this collection. Okay, popped on House of Lashes, Stella Lux Lashes. I used the new MAC Extended Play Per Me Up Mascara, which is a non-waterproof mascara that's supposed to hold your curl for 16 hours, by the way, and so far, it actually does that, and I have never had a mascara actually do that before. It's a little harder to remove than regular non-waterproof mascara, but way easier than waterproof, and so far, I am in love with it. So we're gonna move on, but can we talk about these eyeshadows for a second? Because, I mean, I'm so, like, I'm emotionally fucked up from how good these eyeshadows are for $4.99 for a quad. I didn't do the best eye look of my life, but the shadows themselves 
are phenomenal. Now I'm gonna apply the cream blush. Like I said, this is a black blush that turns into a pink color on the skin. I like this kind of idea with a blush a lot more than I do with a lip product just because the lip products are usually like way too bright a pink and the blush seems to come off a little bit more subtle. I'm just gonna pick some of it up on my ring finger and tap it into my cheekbone. It looks weird and sooty when you first put it on. But once it sits for a second, I'm just gonna blend the edge of that with a little rose blush brush. The blush brush is better than the eye brush, in my opinion. I'm actually gonna try picking some of it up on the brush. That's probably a little bit more blush than I would normally wear, but blush fades really quickly, so I'm not worried about it. I don't really think that the color changing portion of this is necessary, um, but it does come out nice. So it's cool, it's fun, you get to, to experiment with something that looks really weird while you're using it, and it actually does look nice on the skin. So of the two color changing products, I think this one is better. I'm gonna highlight with that same Cover FX palette. I think I'm gonna go into the color Divine. And a nice thing about using a cream blush, by the way, is that it kind of always intensifies your highlight because it gives it something sticky to sit on. Now all that's left from the collection are the four shades of the Liquid Catsuit lipsticks. I am going to swatch each one of them for you and then I'll choose which one I'm gonna pair with this look. All right, we made it through the whole collection. I actually wound up keeping the last shade of lipstick that I applied for the swatches on to wear with this look. This pink sort of a lavender vibe is giving it more of like a spring garden effect rather than like a vampy fall effect, which is what I was getting from the other liquid lipsticks. The last two liquid lipsticks are actually a high shine liquid lipstick. They really remind me of the YSL glossy stained lipsticks. They feel very light on the lips and they are definitely very, very gel-like and glossy. So far, I think they're fantastic. The two liquid lipsticks, like the regular liquid lipsticks, these two shades, they applied really nicely too. Each of these is $4.99 and for $4.99, I really don't think you can go wrong. These are really, really good. I'm literally dropping everything. I'm dropping everything. So jumping back to what we were playing with in the beginning, these skincare items, I think honestly, are all pretty good. The rose toner, very nice. It just reminds me of your typical rose water spray that you might pick up for your face. It's not like super amazing, mind blowing, anything special, but the packaging is really pretty. And it's a very, very good price for a rose water because I have purchased a Moroccan rose water before that was like $13 and this is only $7.99. So that's like half the price, which is a much better deal. The multi-use rose oil is also really, really nice. It reminds me a lot, like I said, of the Carrez rose hip oil. Is it rose hip or rose petal? It looks exactly like this, except it's in Carrez packaging and it smells similar. It feels similar. It just seems overall really similar. This again is only $7.99, which is a much better deal than the Carrez one and that's a product that I've purchased many many times before so to have a $7.99 version of it is uh, pretty nice it's lovely it's a delightful thing to do it's a delightful thing to have the rose primer serum prepped my skin really nicely for makeup it's definitely a lot lighter and more liquidy than the primers that I usually gravitate toward but it did give a nice sticky base it felt like it had enough glycerin in it I'm not sure because I haven't looked up the ingredients but that's what it felt like on the skin I definitely would pair it with a pore blurring or oil absorbing primer through my t-zone going forward I didn't today just for the sake of using it on its own and seeing how it worked 
but that's how I would use it going forward. But I would also continue using this going forward for sure. And again, for $7.99, I really don't think you can go wrong, especially with the nice packaging. The lip scrub has its pluses and its minuses. I felt like it did a really good job of scrubbing and softening my lips. It feels a little weird and waxy when you're applying it, but then when you wipe it off, everything feels really nice. So I wasn't really crazy about how it felt while I was using it. The only thing I don't really like about this one is it doesn't really smell like rose to me. As a matter of fact, it smells just kind of weird, but it really gets the job done. My lips were very, very smooth and very plump to start the swatches. And the lip balm, mm, I gotta be honest, I would skip this one. This is not for me. It's a little too thin. I don't like the pink that it is. It just seems like it's fun because it's like the gray color and it's clear and you put it on and it turns pink. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's not a huge investment and it's a fun thing to try, but I don't think that it's gonna be your new favorite lip balm or anything. The other thing in this collection that I might skip would be the brushes. The eye brush, I would skip altogether. I felt like it was very cumbersome. It's cute. It's very cute to look at. It might look really nice on your vanity. So if you're looking for it just as like a collector's item to place on your vanity, then sure. But if you're looking for for a functioning eye brush. I don't like that. The blush brush, however, much easier to use. And I think the reason for that is because the bristles are longer, so they stick further away from the petal detail that's on the outside, which makes it less likely to like get in the way of your application. And the actual bristles of these brushes are really nice. I just don't think the shape of the rose petal detail on the outside is very practical when it comes to the eye brush. The three eyeshadow quads, I think, stole the show in this collection. These are so unexpectedly good. For $4.99, these blew me away. They knocked my socks off. They did my taxes and they put away my laundry. Colors are all really, really rich and pigmented. The only thing I wish there was a better transition shade within the three, but you could always pair it with something else that you already have. My only complaint on these, like I said, was the packaging. Cause the sticker that goes over the outside kind of sticks it back together. It makes it hard to pry open the little clamshell packaging. It's a little annoying, but for what you're getting inside, it's well worth it. I think these shadows are so bomb. Like they're so good. I'm, I'm just, I, they're so good. Finally, the Liquid Katsu lipsticks. I am not surprised at all that I like those because I have used their Liquid Katsuits before and like them a lot. But what I am surprised by is the high shine version of it because I hadn't used that before and it's really, really pretty. It's very, very comfortable on the lips. And like I said, it reminds me quite a bit of the YSL glossy stains, which are oh, 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 way more expensive. Honestly, overall, I think this collection is an absolute hit. I was so reluctant to sit down and review this entire collection because the first thing I used was this lip balm and I didn't think it was that good. And I truly thought that this was gonna be like the most negative video of all time. I was like, oh God, this collection is gonna suck and I'm gonna sit there on camera and just be negative. And I hate that. I hate doing super negative videos. I always like to give you guys like both sides of like who this product might work for. So it's just not like a bashing it or praising it kind of a thing. I try to look at it from like multiple perspectives when I can. And I'm glad that I sat down and did this because I actually am floored by most of the items. I didn't really have any positives to say about the lip balm, but it just seems like that one was an anomaly in this collection. This one just, this one doesn't live up to the rest of it. Oh, before I finish up, another cool thing is I went ahead and just double checked on the internet before I sat down to film this to make sure that this was still available. And it is currently still available, even though it's limited edition. But I also noticed that Wet n Wild is selling the PR box, like the whole setup that they sent out to us as a set. So you could buy that for $59.99, which is a really good deal. And then there's the smaller set with just the makeup for less money. And I just think it's cool. A lot of times with these collections, you guys leave comments and say that you wish that you were able to buy like the PR set that they sent out and that you would be willing to pay more for it like as like a collector set. And it's cool to see when brands actually do that sometimes, especially for $59.99 because a lot of times these capsule collections can be hundreds of dollars. So this one, not only are they making that an option for you, but it's also more accessible. And I just think that's pretty cool. I think that pretty much sums it up for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, let me know in a comment down below. 
Did you pick anything up from this collection? Are you as shook about the eyeshadows as I am? Uh, have you tried Wet n Wild skincare before? I would just love to know your experiences all around. Leave me a comment and let's chat about it. Please don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it or if you found it helpful or if you just like me because it's really helpful and I always appreciate it. And if you are new here, go ahead and subscribe because um, you just should, you just should. To keep up with me between videos, go ahead and follow me on other social media, but especially Instagram. That is where I spend the most of my time. I'm at Miss Quinn Face on every platform you could ever want to find me on. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you in the next one.